Okay, in this video, we're going to solve two linear equations by graphing. In other words, find the point of intersection. Then we're going to give the slope and the y-intercept of each line. We're going to do these examples by hand, example one through four. And I am very confident that you will find that this is very possible to do. And it just requires you taking the right steps, take your time, graph each line, and just realize it's going to take some time. And it, there, there's many steps to it, okay? So once we have a bit of practice, we should be fine. Let's first start with an easy example so we can understand, you know, what the point of intersection might mean and what the slope and y-intercept might mean, okay? So I'm going to start you off with a blue taxi, where the taxi's fare is $2 per mile with a $1 base fee. Okay, so in other words, when you get into the taxi, you're initially charged one dollar and then for every mile you go in the taxi that the taxi driver charges you two miles. Now the reason we use algebra is so we can replace words with letters. And the reason we like to do that is to save ink because it's easier to write and it's easier to calculate with. So we have to figure out we've got two variables here, the fare and the miles. Uh, just first of all, just to understand this blue taxi, if you went 10 miles in this taxi, what would the fare be? Write it down. It's $2 per mile plus a dollar base fee. If you went 10 miles, what would the fare be? Well, 2 times 10 is 20. 20 plus 1 would be $21, right? 21? Right. Now, so in other words, you know, what's the input? What's the output? Well, Miles comes first. You have to know your miles and then you can calculate your fare. So you input your number of miles and then you can calculate your fare, the output. So the miles is the input x and the fare is the output y. So I have a linear equation y equals 2x plus 1. And to graph this, I simply need to make a table. I make an x, y table, and this is what I do. And this takes time, and you need to take the steps. And it takes time, but, but it can be done. And at this point, you say, well, how do I make a table? Well, let me just tell you this for now. For every time you see x, plug in 0, 1, 2, 3. How about that? And then we'll have these points. We'll be able to calculate y values, and then we can plot these points. How do I calculate y values? I Every time I see x in the equation, I put a parenthesis. See that? 2 times parentheses plus 1, 2 times parentheses plus 1, 2 times parentheses plus 1. Okay? So if x is 0, I plug 0 in for x. If x is 1, I plug in 1. If x is 2, I plug in 2. If x is 3, I plug in 3. And I calculate each one of these. How do I do that? 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is, of course, 1. So when x is 0, y calculates to be 1. In other words, if you go no miles in the taxi, the driver charges you $1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 gives us 3. If I go 1 mile, he'll charge me $3. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. Okay, so this is the um, fair, this is the situation. If I go 3 miles, he charges me $7 and so on, right? So, um, what I want you to do now is to graph this line. So get out some graphing paper. You can press pause in the video while you do that. And our axes are going to be scaled as with, you know, regularly 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And of course we have negative 2 and negative 4 in the x-axis. And the y-axis is the same. It starts at 0, then it goes 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, and then 6, and 7. 8 and 9 and 10 and it goes negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6 and so on. So you can do that. And press pause if you need time to set up your axis. Okay. Now we're going to plot the points. Uh, every ordered pair is x comma y. So we have 0 comma 1 as the first ordered pair. Are you able to graph that? x is 0. You go to the x-axis and you find 0. Where is 0 on the x-axis? Press pause and find 0. Is 0 here? Right. Where is 1 on the y-axis now? Go up and down the y-axis. Here's 1. So this point here, of course, is 0, comma 1. Right? Now we have to graph the point 1, 3. So where is 1 on the x-axis? It's right here. Where is 3 on the x-axis? On the y-axis. Go up and down and here is 3. So that's the point 
one, three, isn't it? Now find the point two, five. X is where? Where's X is two and Y is five? That's right there. And then three, seven. Press pause and get three, seven. Three, seven is here. Okay. Join a straight line through the points. Take out a ruler, put it on the points, draw a straight line. And uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. There we go. Put an arrow here because the line goes that way forever. Put an arrow here. You know, of course, we can't go negative miles. But we, uh, so the taxi, for the taxi, it should start where miles are zero. X is zero and it should go on forever there, right? But the point of it is, the point of the matter is, there are our other real life examples where it does go down into the negatives. And we have homework where the lines go into the negatives. So let's just, just for fun, we'll make this one go into the negatives as well. We'll imagine that there is such a thing as negative miles, which of course there is not. But we'll just do it for fun. Now we'll label the graph Y equals 2X plus 1, okay? Now... We need to get the slope and the y-intercept of each line in these problems. So, what we need to remember is the general form of a linear equation is, of course, y equals mx plus b, where this uh, letter m, this number m is the slope, and this number b is the y-intercept. This is the slope, the slope is m, and this is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is always this letter here. Intercept is always b. Okay, we should know that by now. This is the slope. This is the y-intercept. Now, what do we have with y equals 2x plus 1? We have that the number 2 is the slope, isn't it? <coughs> okay, y equals mx plus uh, b. m is 2. b is, sorry, I should do that in red y equals mx plus b. m is 2, b is 1. That's what we have, right? Now, look at the blue line. Where does the blue line hit the y-axis? Where does the blue line go through the y-axis? Where does it intercept the y-axis? It intercepts it here, doesn't it? What point is that on the y-axis? That is the point 1. So we can see clearly that the y-intercept b is equal to 1, and 1 is here. And this is always the case. In other words, if you plug 0 in for x, you have y equals 1. See that? If I plug 0 in for x, 2 times 0 is 0, I have y equals 1. So this number is b, the y-intercept. This is always the y-intercept, isn't it? b is 1, right? Think about the slope. The slope is um, rise over run okay if i take two five i'm just checking that the slope is two the slope should be two from the equation we're just going to check that if i take two random points on the line for example this point and this point it should work out to be two because that's what my equation says if i want to go from here to here i can either go diagonally up or i can go across and then straight up okay so i'm going to go across and then straight up if I go across and then straight up, I'll be going across one and I'll go, be going up two. Now, what do you, which is which? Which is the rise? Which is the run? Well, you run along the ground. So the run would be when you went across. You ran across one, didn't you? The rise is going up like a balloon goes up in the air. That's rise. Balloon goes up in the air, right? Rise obviously has to be going up. So the rise is two. So our rise over run is equal to two over one, which is two. So, of course, the slope is the rise over run, and we have found that m is 2. So, from the graph, we have found that the slope is 2, and the y-intercept is 1, and that that is uh, also uh, turns up with our equation y equals 2x plus 1. Okay? What I want you to do right now is press pause on the video and calculate um, the table for the green taxi, and then plot the green taxi. Okay, and then we'll talk about the slope on a y-intercept again. So the green taxi is the fare equals 1 times number of miles plus 4. Now, again, you know, you have to know your miles, and then you can know your fare. So just tell me this before you press pause. How many, if you went 10 miles in the green taxi, what would your fare be? 10 miles in the green taxi? Wouldn't the fare be 1 times 10 plus 4? $14, right? 
So if we go 10 miles in this one, it's $14, right? So in any case, my fare is going to be y. My x, miles is going to be x, so y equals 1 times x plus 4. And I need to make a table x, y, okay? And I guess a lot of people get stuck at this. How do I make a table? Where you just plug in 0, 1, 2, 3 for x. I made up these numbers, plug them in, now calculate the y's and then plot the line, okay? So you should have this situation where if you see x, you put in parentheses and then you plug in the x values, don't you? 1 times 0 plus 4, 1 times 1 plus 4, 1 times 2 plus 4, 1 times 3 plus 4, and then we calculate each one of these. So we should have these ordered pairs, 0, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7. If you had a hard time with that, I, I uh, recommend, you know, you may not be in the right class this term. So this is the ordered pair x, y, and it goes 0, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7. You should be able to do this. This is fundamental. Now we should be able to plot all of these ordered pairs. So your graph should look like this. 0, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7. And then you should be able to get out a ruler and draw a line through those four points. Like this, okay? So it goes up like that. That's our uh, green taxi fare, which is, of course, y equals 1x plus 4. And we will make it, just for fun, we'll make it go into the negatives, the, the negative x's, let's say, just because the other examples do. But of course, a taxi fare never has negative miles. I mean, that's silly. But in any case, there's our um, y equals 1x plus 4. Now, just to, first first of all, we'll just check the slope of the y-intercept on this equation, right? y equals 1x plus 4, and the general rule is y equals mx plus b. So our m, our slope is 1, obviously, and our b, our b is 4 on this, right? Obviously, it should be. Now, I'm just going to check that. The b is the, supposed to be the y-intercept, where the graph hits the y-axis. So where does the green line hit the y-axis? At this point here, okay? That is the point. What point is that on the y-axis? That is the point where, you know, 4, isn't it? So our, we've checked that our b is 4 for this line, right? What about the slope? The slope should be 1. Let's check if our slope is 1. Slope is always rise over run, okay? To get a slope from a line, I'm just going to check that the slope is 1. To get a slope from a line, I take two points on the line, okay? And I go, and I'll just quickly zoom in here. I take two points on the line, and I go across, I run, and then I rise, and I count what happened. If I take two points on this line, and then run and rise the next one, I ran one, and then I rose one. See that? Say rise, run one, rise one. Run one, rise one. Again, run one, rise one, run one, rise one. See that? Run one, rise one. So I'm going across one and up one, across one, up one. So my run is one, my rise is one. And 1 over 1, we should know, gives 1. So our slope is 1. So we are seeing that our run is 1, our rise is 1. Our run is 1, our rise is 1. Run 1, rise 1, and so on. And that gives us our points on the red, on the our green line. So we can write rise over run equals, well, the run is 1, the rise is 1, 1 over 1 is 1. So we're checking that our slope is 1. And of course, from the green line, we can see it's y equals 1x plus 4. So again, we're checking that m is 1, b is 4. But of course, we didn't even have to, I mean, I'm just checking it off the graph, but which you should definitely do. So you really start to understand what slope and y, that this is in fact the slope. This is definitely the y-intercept for each straight line that you ever graph. But of course, you can just read it off the equations for, you know, the green line, M, of course, is 1, and the y-intercept, B, is 4. See, because M is 1, B is 4. For the blue line, M, of course, is 2, and the y-intercept, B, is 1. You can just read it off the blue line, okay? Now, the point of intersection is the point where the two lines hit each other. The two lines hit each other at this point here, okay? And what is that point? 
Every point is x, y. So you get the x coordinate first and then the y coordinate. And this point is where x is 3, isn't it? And y is 7. So this is the point of intersection. Why should we ever be concerned about the point of intersection in a real life example in the world? Uh, here's this taxi pair will tell us why in some way. It's 3, 7. In other words, on the blue taxi, if I go 3 miles, they, the driver charges me $7. On the green taxi also, if I go 3 miles, the driver charges me $7. So for the blue and green taxi, going 3 miles is the same fare. Okay, so that's the significance of the point of intersection 3, 7. Now, um, let's look at some other points. On the um, uh, blue taxi, if I went 4 miles, the fare would actually be $9. See, because 2 times 4 plus 1 gives 9. However, if I went 4 miles in the green taxi, the fare would, of course, be 1 times 4 plus 4, $8. Okay. If I went five miles in the blue taxi, fare would be 11. If I went five miles in the green taxi, the fare would only be nine. So the point is, if I go five miles in the blue one and five miles in the green, compare it, the green one is cheaper. So for five miles, the green taxi is only $9, but the blue taxi is more expensive. For three miles, of course, they're the same price, $7. But if I go, say, one mile, the green taxi costs five dollars, but one mile the blue taxi costs three. So up, so basically up at this here, the blue taxi is cheaper, the green taxi is more expensive, and then they're the same at three miles, and then over three miles the blue taxi becomes more expensive. Okay, and you can see that from the graph because initially the blue taxi is or the blue line is below the green line. The blue taxi is cheaper than the green taxi. Then as the miles increase, they get closer and closer until three miles. They're both the same cost at $7. And then the green taxi is cheaper than the blue taxi, okay? Because it has a, a cheaper cost per mile. So the slope represents cost per mile in this example. Of course, the y-intercept represents the base fee, the initial fee of the taxi, right? So... Um, there's not much more we can do to this. We could also um, check the point of intersection, which we'll need to do. So check 3, 7. The two equations were y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals 1x plus 4. If I plug the point x, y, 3, 7 into each equation, I'm going to plug y is 7. I'm going to plug in x is 3, so I'll end up with 7 equals 2 times 3 plus 1, 7 equals 6 plus 1, 7 equals 7. The point of intersection is definitely on the blue line because it solves the blue line's equation. Now check it in the green line, y equals 1x plus 4. Plug 7 in for y, and then 1 times uh, x is 3 plus 4, so we have 7 equals 3 plus 4 is 7. And the point of intersection worked in this line as well. So this is how you check your point of intersection. You plug it into both equations. And if, you know, two sides are equal on the equation, that means it worked. So this is, in fact, definitely a point on each line. And that, therefore, means it's ex definitely the point of intersection. Okay? Having a look at example two, y equals negative x and y equals x plus 3. The problem is you might be given these equations one on top of the other. The question is, what do you do? Well, I advise you to write them like this, side by side. See that? Now we can go ahead and make a table for each equation and then graph each line. How do you make a table? You do this. Put an X here, do a line down, and do it for this one as well. So we need to make two tables and graph two different separate lines. And take your time and don't make a mistake. So how do we, what do we plug in for x? Well, you know, I just advise you to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, I would say. And then go from there. How do you do that? Well, you know, wherever you see an x, put a parenthesis, okay? So it's negative parenthesis, negative parenthesis, negative parenthesis, negative parenthesis. And then you just plug in the input 0, 1, 2, 3, right? 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay with that? And then we calculate each one. Negative 0 is 0. Negative 1, that's negative 1. This is negative 2. This is negative 3. 
And then at this point, I advise you to plot this line now instead of doing this one because you might get confused. Okay, so plot the blue line now. Every point ordered pair is x comma y, so we have zero zero, one negative one, two negative two, three negative three, and we keep going right. So zero zero, x is one, y is negative one x is 2, y is negative 2, x is 3, y is negative 3, and we have these points. Now, um, you know, if you draw a line through those points, you might make it really, you might draw a really bad line and not get the, you know, not, not try to do the correct line. You need to know that these points continue down with the same pattern, okay? Or in other words, you go over one and down one. Over one, down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over and down one to get the next point. And this stairs obviously goes the same way, doesn't it? Up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, like that. Okay. So the points should always be in a straight line. Okay. So you can do that if you want. And now when I draw a line through it, it should be correct. And I label that graph as the graph y is equal to negative x. Okay. So um, now you've got to graph the green line. That's y equals x plus 3. How do you do that? Can you remember? Just make up values for x, right? What values for x are you going to make up? How about 0, 1, 2, 3? That'll work, won't it? And now how do I plug them in here? Well, wherever every time you see x, put a parenthesis. Okay? So just do this all the way down. Now plug in the values of x, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and now calculate each one and plot the line. So I'll pr press pause on your video and do that, and then I'll do it. So you should have the y outputs being 3, 4, 5, 6, and then when you plot the ordered pairs, we have 0, 3, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6. So x is 0, y is 3. X is 1, Y is 4, X is 2, Y is 5, X is um, 3, Y is 6, and so on. And so if I was to continue this pattern, obviously I would just make dots on these points. And obviously I'd make dots down in this direction as well. So just make, you know, I can do that just to make sure, you know, this has to be a straight line, right? So the dots need to all be joined up. And if they don't go in a straight line, then you've made a calculation error here. So they should all go in a straight line because it's a linear equation. And this line, of course, is called y equals x plus 3. Okay. So um, we have done that. Here is the point of intersection. We should uh, figure out what that is, try and read what that is, and then check it in each equation. And the thing about it is we should also give the slope and y-intercept for each line, okay? So, which we haven't done yet. So, just starting with the blue line, y equals negative x, right? That can also be written. What's the coefficient on x here? Negative x. How many x's do I see? I only see 1x. So, that can also be written negative 1 times x, isn't it? Now, what's the y-intercept? The y-intercept is 0. See that? Negative 1x plus 0. So I can simply write down that my slope is negative 1 and my y-intercept is 0 because every linear equation is y equals mx plus b. So the slope is negative 1, the y-intercept is 0. So I've done it for the blue line. Can you do that? Get the slope and the y-intercept for the green line? Press pause and do the green line now. So, you know, obviously if y is mx plus b, now, I need a coefficient for x, don't I? I only see 1x there, so that, that's the same. x is the same as 1x, just like apple is the same as 1 apple or cherry is the same as 1 cherry, right? So, obviously, I can see that my slope is 1, my y-intercept is 3, okay? So, we've done the green line, slope and y-intercept, and the blue line, slope and y-intercept. And, I mean, just, you know, just check that intuitively. I mean, the green line, where does the green line go through the y-axis? Where's the y-intercept? The green line, well, goes through the y-intercept at uh, y-axis at three, doesn't it? So yes, that does work. The y-intercept is in fact three, isn't it? And the slope, if I did rise over run, I would run one, rise one. So my, like for this one, the rise over run 
would be I would run one rise one run one rise one run one rise one be one over one and when you get your slope always go from left to uh, right when you get your slope because you always read from left to right the number line goes from left to right zero one two three four five six seven right always go from left to right so run one rise one run one rise one rise one rise one so obviously my slope is one over one which is one and that matches up and same with the blue line the y-intercept is zero and sure enough it goes through zero the y-axis when I get the slope if I have the blue line I'm going from left to right I run one but then I rise negative one. See, I go down one, run one, down one, run one, down one, run one, down one. So my rise is negative one because I go down one. And negative one of one gives me negative one. So obviously the slope for the blue line should be negative one. And of course that matches up with the equation where m is negative one, right? Anyway, that's the slope of the y-intercept done. Now we've got to get the point of intersection, which is this point here. And if you did a careful graph, then you should have come up with an point of intersection is x comma y so if you did a nice careful graph for this the x is between negative 1 and negative 2 so your x should be negative 1.5 okay your x should be negative 1.5 negative 1 and a half negative 1.5 and the y part should be positive 1.5 okay so this should be your point of intersection negative 1.5 and then positive 1.5 and of course we can um, certainly check that so we check it into check it in each equation um, and you know I'm going to use my uh, tables to check the point of intersection so and of course I should I should say that this is the point of intersection point of intersection is negative 1.5 1.5 so I'm going to check that the point of intersection is um, if x is negative 1.5 what would y be if x is negative 1.5 what would y be in each equation so if x is negative 1.5 here I've got to calculate negative x or negative whatever that is if I plug negative 1.5 in here I have negative negative that makes positive 1.5 and there indeed is my point of intersection so it works in that equation if I check negative 1.5 in this one it's the the output is parentheses plus three so I put in negative 1.5 in for X see that and I calculate negative 1.5 plus 3 what does that give you write it down gives you 1.5 doesn't it so I've got it again so the point of intersection uh, negative 1.5 1.5 is in this line and it is in this line so it checks out in both. So the point of intersection is indeed correct. And so put a smiley face there because you, that is correct. Okay.